before the pandemic and even last year, I mean, it's it's really noticeable and visible on the street. Uh, how how is it out there? Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> Sorry. Welcome to the podcast. So Conversation with the people who were with me. In the world. So I wanted to bring on my favorite person, my former photographer at CW6 in San Diego, and my friend, Jeremy Flint. Jeremy, welcome to the show. How are you? I am doing very good, Carlos. It's great to catch up with you. How are you doing, my friend? You know, I'm just living the life. Tell me how you're doing amid the COVID-19 pandemic. When when COVID-19 hit, um, I was kind of at first, I was in shock. I was surprised that this actually happened the way it did, like... Because I thought the year was starting off really good for all of us. We were doing some travel for the for the station, covering. Um, we went down to LA to cover Kobe Bryant's death, and then it just seemed like the world stopped in March. And you know, for me, my perspective um, as as a journalist, and besides being a parent and whatnot, I chose that I was going to make uh, the pandemic. Um, as very productive for myself as I could. I wasn't going to get caught up, uh, feel depressed, feel alone, or, you know, being, I guess, isolated from people and having a quarantine and not being around people. It, it kind of takes a toll on people. But for me, what I, what I did was I kind of focused on um, – maybe in my, my five-year plan, my outlook, where I'm going to be in the next five years. And I used these several months to put myself in a better position. Because you remember when you and I left uh, San Diego a couple of years ago together, we both came up here to Sacramento and worked in television news. I didn't have a very good um, plan as to when, when, when the TV station laid um, both you and me off. I didn't have a job set up right away. I didn't have like a roadmap of where I was going and what I was doing. And I didn't really have any money saved in the bank or things together very well for myself at the time. So I used this pandemic as this world crisis, as you call it. Um, Oh my God, you know, this is, this is very real and even worse than you and I losing our jobs back in a couple of years ago. I decided to take kind of matters into my own hands and I started putting in together, uh, saving money, putting money away in the bank, uh, building an emergency fund, uh, to be liquid in case I get laid off again or something else happens where I'm ready to go six months of, of having money saved up. Uh, and then I reallocated the positions in my 401k and, and all that kind of stuff. So if any of this can like help your, listeners out you know to use this time wisely during your pandemic when you're um isolated at home you know start putting your your focusing on your future and where you're going to be at in the next several years and that's kind of what i've been working on you know i don't know exactly where i'm going to live in the next five years but i do know that i'm i'm using these steps wisely right now to just kind of take better precautions than what I had going for myself a couple of years ago. And I'm starting to see that uh, those fruits of those labors are paying off. I have all my credit cards paid off right now. So I'm pretty happy about that. That's awesome. When I moved, I um, started to think more about my finances and my future and started listening to the financial experts. And there's a lot of stuff that I didn't know back then when I was young that I wish I did know and just like you i'm like saving and i'm preparing for the future and it's kind of a scary time right now it, it really is you know um this week um carlos i you know and, and you know arden fairmall you, when you were here in sacramento for the past couple of years so you know what i'm talking about i literally was over at the mall um in the middle of the week i had to shoot some video over by the mall and i i went inside the mall because the malls actually opened up again uh, you can go in there and go to uh, some businesses, same as you can at the Roseville Galleria um, up in Roseville, California. You would not believe that um, only 25 businesses have made it in the Roseville Galleria. Like, 
everything else is shut down, like, and it's not reopening. Wow. Um, over at the Art, Art and Fair Mall, it's the same way. Like, you're seeing these daily mom and pop businesses that have storefronts in these malls that aren't reopening. You know, they're not lucky like the Apples and and all the top tier uh, stores. Driving into work every day here in Sacramento, I I, I see a lot of homeless um, throughout the uh, the streets of Sacramento. Um, more so now than I did beginning before the pandemic and even last year. I mean, it's it's really noticeable and visible on the street. Uh, how how is it out there? Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> Sorry. Oh no 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 no. Where, where where I was saying like you're seeing like the at least I'm seeing the rise of the homeless in in, in our area. I've never seen the, this time of unprecedented time that we're living in right now, Carlos. Anything that we've dealt with in the past. I, I really feel that like going forward, the world is never going to be the same again. I, I know we're eventually going to get back into the movie theater. I don't know about you, but I miss a good movie. Right. Are you watching any good movies or TV shows on Netflix or Hulu? You know what? Um, I've been catching up on some of the, the older stuff that they had been putting back, back out. <laughs> um, I just know we're inundated with all these wildfires here in California right now. And I, I'm just trying not to breathe that smoke. So I have been, staying inside lately yeah um you mentioned um wildfires and when i lived in california i covered my share of wildfires people who are listening and they see those images they see what's happening in california can you paint a picture as a photographer who's actually out there in the middle of all this can you describe the scene out there and what you see you know on a daily basis um literally it's it's the orange glow, all that, the sky, it's no joke. You, the visibility is, is just awful. I mean, you know, um, overnight, um, a lot of the stringers were going up and down Highway 162, and you could just drive through it, and you would look, and it, and it just looked like between uh, the homes and, and, and every bush and tree was on fire. It's like you're driving through a field of Christmas trees and you're looking at everything just go at like smoldering. And when you go back into these, like, like, uh, well, uh, the Butte up in Butte County by Orville up there, um, uh, Berry Creek is the main part that got, got hit pretty hard. Um, I mean, there were burned out, uh, camps up there that were kids would go to summer camp and stuff. And you'd see this devastation of these homes and it's just intense. I mean, you get up there, you, you Early this week, we couldn't breathe. I mean, you could you could breathe, but it's you're, you're you're inhaling probably seven cartons of cigarettes at a time. I mean, that's the equivalent of what it's like. I mean, the smoke is so thick. It's it's amazing to see that, like, you know, that this is as as where um, we're at in California. I mean, every year it's a crazier crazier wildfire season than the last. It's just it's insane, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've been a photographer for years, right? Reno, San Diego, Sacramento. What keeps you what keeps you going every day? What keeps me going every day? I would say the ability to do something different every day. You're not doing the same thing where you go sit at your desk all day and you have to sit there for eight or nine hours. You go out and sometimes you work with the same reporter, sometimes you work with a different reporter. Sometimes you get to cover a sporting event or you get to cover a featurey, like an opening of like a restaurant or something like that. In in San Diego, when you and I, we, we worked down there, that's pretty much what we did. Everything was, I called it rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how, on your list of favorite TV reporters that you've worked with, where am I? Oh, my you're, you're easily, <laughs> you're easily probably in the top three. You helped me a lot, Carlos. And uh, two and a half years ago, like I swear to God, oh well, no, it's almost three because next May I'll make it four years. I've been four in years already. Can you believe that? Next, not this, not not this May, but next May I'll make it four years. Wow. I can't believe I already made it three years. But what I was going to say was. You know, you you helped so much in helping me get the job up here a couple of years ago, and I'm very grateful for it, very much. I can't get over how how you know how it happened. Few of us, well, well, think about it. I mean, 
when when that TV station shut down, there was only like three to maybe five of us right away found work in television like a month later after being off the air in in San Diego. And that never I mean, for for an on air talent such as yourself, you found a job within like a month. Well, I shouldn't say that because you were looking for jobs. When we when we were told we were leaving, the station was closing. We were looking in January, but dude, within that three month span, you had a job lined up, and we were in Sacramento a month after being laid off. Dude, most people it takes such a long time to find work like that, and you were hit the ground running and did it. For me, it was a culture shock because, like you said, we were covering um, rainbows and unicorns in San Diego, and. I got to Stockton, California, and I was covering homicides and fires and breaking news and all this stuff. It was like, sometimes I, it was intense, you know? Oh, for sure. You, you know, it, that's the thing about the Central Valley here in in, in Northern California. Is compared to, You're from Modesto originally. I'm from Modesto originally. The two markets, in my opinion, from Southern California are different there than it is up here. Up here, and and maybe you could tell me if I'm wrong on this. Did you think it's a little bit more slower paced up here as it was compared to that down in Southern California? Honestly, slower pace? No way. You thought it was more faster paced? Maybe because I I, I worked alone as a uh, MMJ multimedia journalist. You um, were more of a true MMJ up here than you were down there because down there you had photographers. We a had a photographer, more. yeah. You were one of my photographers, <laughs> right? But but I mean, what, yeah, what I'm saying is, is like, I mean, even though you had Tony in in Stockton, but you you seem like you probably had to grind out a lot more packages without Tony. He did mostly your live shots, correct? Or am I wrong on that? Yeah, usually, okay, I'd get in, I do the editorial meeting, and tell the producers what stories are out there. They assign me to things, and then I would be out the door trying to find stories, or rather, interviews and. Um, get all that stuff together, shoot my own stuff. And then I'd come back and then Tony, my photographer in Stockton would um, have a live shot already set up for me. So I just would go and go in front of the camera. Sometimes when I had to do like a second story, he would help me edit. And I remember constantly, I would always say to him, I'm coming in hot, Tony, (laughs) which means I'll be coming in like very last minute before that. The show airs. Nothing. It was totally different from San Diego. Oh. Do you remember? Now, I was in San Diego from 2015 to 2017 when the station closed down. Yeah, I remember Do you that. remember um, <laughs> when we first met? <laughs> it was my birthday. Oh, that's right. Okay. It was your birthday. <laughs> there was a limo involved. Dude, okay. So that was like the big F you to my ex-wife at the time because... Because I just, okay, I just got divorced, okay, took me to the cleaners, <laughs> like, I mean, it was just, I mean, if you looked at my stuff on paper back then, dude, like, it was probably the worst time of my life, in the way of 2015 would go down as, like, <laughs> the worst, in the way of, like, I had horrible custody arrangement with my kid, I was every other weekend dad. I was like seeing her every other day, picking her up at school, and because well, I wasn't used to that kind of a schedule. You go from like every day tucking her in bed at night to like having like two, three hour dinner visits, and then every other weekend she stays with you. It's just it was crazy. So not only did I go through the whole okay I did, deduction of you know child support out of my paycheck, all that kind of stuff, and just like trying to figure out how I'm gonna like pay all these bills, do all this stuff as a single dad. And so um, I forget I had uh, a, 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 some fun saved up or whatever, and I used it. I had a limo for my birthday. It was a good time, but that's, that. that's, when, that's when I first started uh, to work with you and stuff. I think you thought we were a pretty crazy bunch that night. I was like, what did I get myself into? I, <laughs> but no regrets. It was pretty fun. Oh, my God. You had the... You had the great schedule. That eight to five shift was awesome. Man. I worked um, like a Monday through Friday. I think I think it was eight o'clock to like f- five or something. And you know, I've been lucky enough in my whole TV career. I've worked like a Monday through Friday, nine to five. Um, Bakersfield, I worked like a evening shift. 
3 to 11. I remember requesting to do the morning show just as a backup when people go on vacation because I needed that switch, you know, and it, it kind of helped me, um, you know, enjoy my job more. And I had more opportunities for live and fun stuff. And a lot of times that shift isn't fun, as you it, know. It really is. You know, waking up at 2.30 in the morning. Exactly. Okay, so the description of my, my show is award-winning journalist and social media pro Carlos Crack catches up with the sources, which is a term in journalism, sources like a uh, person, uh, catches up with the uh, sources that inspired some unforgettable TV moments in my career. So you, for like two years, were behind some of those unforgettable TV <laughs> moments. Do you have like a favorite that you and I covered when we worked together in San Diego? You know, I think, I think I know what you're going to say. Uh, which, one, which one do you think I was going to say? I, I thought you were going to say the one with your daughter. Oh, that was, that was, that was, uh, I was, I was, I was going to say that, but the other one I was going to say was that time they sent us up to uh, uh, <laughs> uh, San Bernardino. Oh, yeah. And we had to run around and shoot all that video, and then they couldn't get us live. Nothing worked. Oh my God! It was—it's at least two hours in that in that traffic going up the five, the fifteen. I mean, and then they sent. Remember how they sent you and I like at, at eleven o'clock in the afternoon, and we're like, you know what? We're stopping off at Taco Bell and getting lunch. And I remember like, that, <laughs> dude. Because like that was like everybody else went up there early in the morning, and then we get there and we're told, oh, we had to park all the way around. <laughs> Oh, my God. It was awesome. I do remember that. <laughs> Since we mentioned the one with your daughter, we got to tell the listeners what we're talking about. And um, my assignment that morning, I was covering the morning, filling right. in. And my assignment was to go to your daughter's school because they were having a big science project, right? Right. Correct. God, I want to say it was... Um, they were like launching uh, a rocket, right? Yes. It was a... Uh, well, the, the egg drop. It was a science thing. And it was... It was interesting you bring that up because it was in 2016, and so I said, "Hey, I got a great active. We could have they're going to have the the fire department there, and they're going to be dropping eggs out of the sky for the kids, and da 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 da. And it's all science related. And so we went, we covered that for the morning show. And uh, so I mean, those are kind of cool. You know, you get to go to your kids' uh, uh, elementary school and do that kind of stuff. I thought it was interesting. You know, I mean. And I think those are the kind of stories you like doing, Carlos, because it wasn't you weren't doing that crazy grind of murder, mayhem, you know, death and destruction, you know. What what were some of the favorite stories you liked covering when you were here, either in Stockton or in San Diego? I did a lot of um, covering of the military when I was in San Diego, and that was cool. And I also liked covering immigration. They because we were so close to Tijuana that often I would go out there with you guys and cover stories um, on the border. And then um, sometimes I'd go by myself and then do a live report uh, from the U.S.-Mexico border. That was fun to put on the old resume. That was the last – I, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but that was, I think, the last story I covered with you was a story at the Mexican consulate there in San Diego. <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> You know, my, my biggest regret was not trying to stay there, like work at the other TV stations. But my mind was, you know, um, not a spring chicken anymore. And I was like, I got to think about my future. I got to have a full-time job. And some of the stations were offering like freelance work and part-time stuff. And I was like, no, I need my, you know, full-time gig. And so I regret not working hard to like stay there. But um, I love the fact that I moved to Stockton, California, because the stories up there were just better. I think. Yeah, oh, yeah, totally. And and if you look at it, the percentage of people that leave Sacramento here, and and that's not to say that people don't get jobs out of San Diego because they do, or or Southern California for that matter. But but if you're looking to move upward in your career. And obviously, I think we all want to get raises and we all want to get a, a higher paycheck because once you get to be a certain age, you know, and if you're going to live in California, and this is just um, 
from my perspective, I'm, I'm in my mid forties. If you're not making upwards of 65,000 or more, or even a baseline salary of 75,000 as an, an entry level salary in, in California today, in today's climate of the pandemic and you have to buy a house and you want, or a condo, or you want to be able to live comfortably and not eating top ramen every night, you have to make a decent salary. And I've always felt that, that, you know, the news business and it's not just, Oh, you get the San Diego discount when you work in San Diego and they pay you in sunshine. But I think they, they give you that, the well, we can't afford to pay you when I think that, some of these places, I think they can. They just kind of tend to take advantage of the situation. And our place, yeah, we had some serious issues. But, um, you know, seeing as how things are now, uh, I don't regret for one one bit leaving when I did. Um, I, and, and, and I think to, to my, my thoughts on this, I think it was actually good when they closed down when they did because – you know, it gave us a fresh start to work on our future a lot sooner. Can you imagine if that thing would have dragged on? We could still be down there in the same situation that we're in now. And I'm telling you, man, I, I, I'm, I'm it's just like you, I think we're all in a better position, dude. And, and I think we, we have to be pretty excited about that. So you've been in, you've been a, you've been a photographer at local news stations for almost 25 years how has the business changed since you started? It's changed, and the equipment's gotten a lot more advanced. Things have gotten a lot faster. You're seeing now our live shots are done on uh, little backpacks. They're not done on... Um, oh, live trucks? Yeah, I mean, we still use live trucks, but to, to I, I think your station has really gotten away from running live trucks consistently. I mean, they drive them out in the field, but they are they're run and gun with the TVU backpacks. Um, our, our place is really getting into that realm now of just mostly using backpacks. I mean, I drive a live truck around, but 90% of my live shots out of these trucks right now are on backpacks because they're being controlled from our assignment editor. With the people who were with me in the world. Do you have any advice for journalism students out there who may be listening, who may be interested in being where you are or, you know, being where I used to be on television as a reporter every day? No. <laughs> Did you say no? I got to be honest. I don't want to say I don't have advice for it. If you're going <laughs> to want to start in a big market, you know, you can definitely do that. You can definitely start wherever you want to start. But just know that if they aren't going to pay you a ton of money and you're working in a big market and you can barely afford to be there, you might want to learn to cut your teeth in a small – and just build your reel and learn how to get good. And then when you want to get to that place you really want to be at, you know. But there are some people that have this gift and they know what they're doing and they get out of college and they're – focused and they but i just don't see it right now and to be honest with you what i'm really seeing carlos is a lot of these colleges nowadays they're offering less and less journalism classes a lot of these schools whether they're junior colleges or whatnot they're cutting those multimedia programs and they're they're not what they once were the training grounds aren't the way they once were i mean i could be wrong on this but I, i'm seeing that Television is becoming the next newspaper, man, you know. Uh, it's sad, but, I mean, I'm just not seeing the numbers of kids going out of college to get into what we're doing like they used to. Maybe I'm wrong in that. What do you think? I, well, ever since our TV station closed down, there have been a couple of more that have also closed down. So I feel like... That's a pattern that, you know, we're heading to, like you said, like newspapers have been doing. A lot of people are turning to social media. Um, like I turn to social media. I don't see a lot of people advertising. And it leads me to believe is this third, fourth quarter that we're getting into in television? Is it is it financially like 
are people because I, I see it all over Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, you know, all the different online uh, en- entities. It, it, mostly in social media, you're seeing all that political advertising. You don't see it on on the tube anymore. So it leads me to believe that it's we're. we're <laughs> We're in a consolidation period or something. I could be wrong. Yeah, I mean, there's so many ways for people to get their news nowadays. If I don't get a meme or a text from you during the day, then it didn't happen. That's how I look at it. Well, Jeremy, we got to wrap it up. Thanks so much for taking part in this, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk with me today. It was great catching up. And uh, good luck. And we'll, of course, talk to you. You're a friend to the show, so you're always welcome to stop by and talk to us. And uh, have fun with ABC 10 in Sacramento, California. All righty, Carlos. Thank you so much for having me, dude. I will be back definitely. I, I got to check out this podcast, dude. We got to get some, like, stickers made of the show. Ralph, put, 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 put the bumper stickers on uh, uh, the news truck <laughs> out here in California. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to put you on the, on the list for a T-shirt. There we go. And I start selling them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. All right, man. <laughs> And that's a wrap. Thanks for listening. Check us out at Carlos Tonight on Twitter and Instagram, Carlos Tonight Podcast on Facebook for more on the show and upcoming guests. My theme was created and performed by Skin Gallus. The show was produced by yours truly, Carlos Correa. Carlos Tonight is available every other Wednesday wherever you get your podcasts.